Hello everyone, let's get started. First off, this video is just for educational purposes. I have no financial interests and I don't have sponsored links on my videos. If you want to contact me, contact me on Twitter via ipinky77 or leave me a comment on this video. In most my videos I provide additional sources in the description of the video. So always make sure that you check the description of my video. This video is intended for newcomers in XRP. Let us first take a look at the problem Ripple tries to solve. Traditional payment rails have usually three problems, speed, cost and interoperability. They are slow, they cost a lot and they are not interoperable with one and each other. Lack of interoperability also means that there is worldwide about 1.7 billion unbanked people. For them also the high cost is a problem. That basically means that people which are unbanked cannot participate in global trade, like they cannot do an order on Amazon or an Uber driver in Kenya could not receive money for his services he provides. In fact, Ripple has been working together with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in Africa with the project called Mocha Loop to help create interoperability among the different payment systems in Africa and help bank the unbanked. So Ripple focuses on solving the three problems, cost, speed and interoperability. But let's now take a look at the vision of Ripple. Ripple's vision is called the Internet of Value. We did already have two industrial revolutions. One was the shipping container which made shipping easy, shipping of products and the second was the creation of the Internet which made the information exchange totally easy. To achieve this vision, Ripple has invented the Interledger protocol. Interledger protocol works similar to the IP protocol of the current internet. It helps you exchange value worldwide in an easy, constant and standard way. Ripple made this ILP Interledger protocol publicly available and it's now being governed and maintained by the W3C consortium which basically takes care of all internet protocols worldwide. The basis of the research of most people in the XRP environment is the slide you're seeing now. It shows basically the connection of all the different payment rails on the different countries or continents together with all the big global enterprises like Amazon, Uber, PayPal, etc. In the middle of this slide you see ILP, the Interledger Protocol and all connections are done via the digital asset called XRP. Ripple rather sooner than later realized that they could not convince banks to make transaction, cross-border transactions worldwide with the help of a digital asset. That's why they changed their strategy. Let's now take a look at their strategy. They created three products, XCurrent, XRapid and XVIA. On a high level description, which is more intended for your mom or grandparents, one could explain the products like this. XCurrent makes the payment fast, XRapid makes the payment cheap and XVIA is an interface from the global companies such as Uber into the RippleNet. Please do not use this description when you talk about people who are savvy with the products from Ripple. Use it just for people who need to understand it on a really, really high level. A more correct description of the three products goes like that. XCurrent serves two main purposes. 
It acts as a messaging layer. Think of it as WhatsApp or Telegram or WeChat, where a bidirectional communication ten, can take place. Xkern also implemented an early version of ILP, which made it possible to send fiat worldwide. Xrapid, on the other hand, provides on-demand liquidity via a digital asset called XRP, a so-called bridge currency. But there still was a problem. How could Ripple scale the three products on a worldwide scale? Ripple addressed this early on by talking to the world's most important banking system integrators and banking software providers. This partnership started happening in 2015 already. I call this approach the superhighway theory. Find a video with more explanation on that in the accompanying PDF in the description of the video. Now let's take a look at a few other aspects of Ripple. Ripple has been talking to 50 central banks worldwide. They starting these talks in 2014 already. Ripple is also quite tightly connected with the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, through the Ripple chairman Chris Larson, which is a member of the FinTech Advisory Board for IMF. On a recent event sponsored by the Swiss National Bank, the ninth high-level conference on the international monetary system, Ripple was the only com private company present at the event. Since 2015, Ripple has been working together with the Federal Reserve on their Faster Payments Task Force. Ripple is also constantly working together with regulators. You will find a lot of additional information in the PDF. Please check it. In the PDF I have also added a section where you can find the information with, with a few hints and pieces of information re researched by certain people in the community. You will find a list for the most from the most important influencers and researchers on Twitter. You will find a short list of recommended YouTube channels and a list of abbreviations I use in the document and the full list with all the links in the document.